So why the division theorem? Or more precisely, why do we care about a rigorous proof of the division theorem? Um, so let me sh tell you what the division theorem says. This is in chapter three of our number theory textbook. Uh, I've changed it just a tiny bit, uh, but in inessential ways, uh, and changed the, the letters because it's going to be better for the letters later on. So let w and z be two integers. That's what this means. w and z are in the set of integers. Let z not be, to z, be 0, so we're not trying to divide by 0. Then there exist unique integers q, the quotient, and r, the remainder, such that w is qz plus r, and r is between 0 and the size of z, the absolute value of z. And notice the one, one of the changes I made is I let z be uh, negative if necessary. Um, that's not a really big change. If you divide by a negative number, if you divide a positive by a negative, for example, you're going to get a negative quotient. You get minus times minus is plus. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, you could also say it, uh, this is going to be useful later, as uh, r is non negative. It's not really that crucial, actually. And r squared is less than z squared. Another way to say that r is smaller than z. Okay, so I want to validate the fact that a lot of people will look at this and especially look at the two-page proof of this and say, duh, we didn't we know this? This is really elementary school math at this point. Yes, I can take 17, for example. I want to divide it by 5. Yeah, it goes in three times and there's a remainder of 2. Okay, so, so what? Why do we need to prove this really rigorously? And let me give you three arguments, and I think increasing in the level of of power of the arguments. And the last one is one I'm going to focus on, even though it's a little bit more involved. So the first uh, argument, and you'll probably hear this from a lot of people in this kind of context, is this is the rules of math. This is what we do. This is how we do math. Rigor for its own sake. Um, since the Greeks, one big tradition of math has been to just prove everything really rigorously. Uh, I think it's the least good of the arguments. Um, better argument, I think, is that it's practice for more complicated and less familiar or, quote, obvious statements. Um, it's totally necessary to be really, really careful about proving something that's not obvious and you're really not sure if it's actually true. Um, that doesn't really apply too well to the division theorem because very few people are going to doubt this theorem because we have so much experience with integers. And I think we have fairly decent intuition about why it's true, even if you might have a hard time writing down something to the standard of rigor in, in modern mathematics. Okay, But as soon as you get a little further to what's called the Euclidean algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor of two integers, solving linear Diophantine equations, which is the bread and butter, the fundamental of how you proceed with number theory and, and, and get to even more complicated and really interesting stuff like mathematics behind encryption, um, those are not obvious. And so it's really good to have practice for those more complicated situations to make sure that when you don't even know what's true or why, you can prove things carefully. That's not a bad argument. Um, but I think the best argument usually for why we, you would prove a certain result super carefully is, is there a related result, a slight generalization of it, that you don't even know whether it's true or not, and it's not remotely obvious, and it might not even be true. And so it's not obviously true in a different context. Um, and what I would say is this is rigor as the enabler of generality. The way, the reason you prove things rigorously, especially things, things that you might think are obvious, is that it tells you how to generalize, and that's power. Okay, so um, let's see. All right, so we're in the next video. I don't want to make this too long. In the next video, I will show you uh, what I mean by this kind of different context. And you're going to have to take something, some stuff on faith. Um, it's going to be a little bit weird, but it gives you a feeling, a little bit of a feeling of what kind of direction you might go and where these things start to break down.